the day of service program was created to do multiple things. One is not only help our community, but it was to encourage our younger designers to be involved in those communities, allow the communities to understand the power of design and the access to design and how to use design to embed their own programming and their own nonprofit um, goals. It's our responsibility to commit to our city and help them in whichever place we can, right? And obviously our talents, not only creating design solutions, uh, resolving problems, uh, facilitating, is part of what we do. And then our communities will only benefit from that interaction. So what we thought was, well, we have a unique set of skills that we can offer clients in a pro bono capacity that's a bit more than just painting a house. And that's important, right? And it's not that we want to do one over the other, but what are the unique skills that we can bring to the table that we can leverage for a set of clients only as architects or designers? And I guess it was five years ago that we really connected it with Martin Luther King Day. Like what better day of the year to do it than to honor somebody whose life was all about service. After we started with such an obvious connection there, that what better day of the year to do it? And it's just simply sprung from that. For somebody to see uh, the Day of Service be a program that is um, supported by so many people in the office, it tells you something about the culture, the leadership, and the people that work in there that was important for me coming in from the outside. It's important that not only our community understands our process, but they also understand how to get plugged into that process. Our vision is a New Orleans where everyone has a voice and every voice is heard. And we take that very seriously because to us, that is pretty much the essence of what would make a truly equitable and inclusive New Orleans. Because if people don't have the chance to participate in the conversations and the decision making about their futures, then by definition, they're being left behind, things are being done to them rather than with them, and inequity just runs rampant. I started a practice about a year and a half ago called Co-Locate Design, and our core mission is centered around design justice. And really, design justice seeks to find the privilege and power structures that use architecture, design, planning, and the like to uh, perpetuate systems of injustice um, uh, throughout the built environment. And so for us, we think about what does it mean to organize? What does it mean to advocate? What does it mean to design spaces of racial, social, and cultural equity? And in short, we make sure that the buildings we try to design are consistent and considerate of the communities we serve. I'm Ann Yoakum. I'm the director of the Albert and Tina Small Center for Collaborative Design at the Tulane School of Architecture, and I'm also a professor of practice at the Tulane School of Architecture. And we bring design services and design expertise through students and our staff um, to communities that are often underserved by um, the design professions. And we do this in collaboration. A key component of our work is that nonprofit and partner organizations bring ideas to us, and we bring the design expertise, and we work together to to hopefully shape a city that's shaped by all the residents of the city. Uh, my name is Aaron Fruman. Uh, I'm the founder and director of Uncommon Construction. We're a nonprofit in New Orleans that uses the residential construction process to host an apprenticeship program for high school students. So we take kids from six different schools around the city, they get paid and they get school credit for building a house in a semester. And then any money or revenue that we make from that house that they worked on, we match their paycheck with a scholarship. My name is Jack Carey and I work at Live Oak Wilderness Camp. I'm Caleb Dufresne, I'm the program director for Live Oak Wilderness Camp. No idea was too big. So for EDR to come in and help us out and be like, all right, like we're thinking cabins, let's think anything. To have a whole bunch of intelligent adults being like, all right, let me use this skill set to help you guys uh, live out your dream. Um, we got a lot of good things. We got a lot of ideas that we never would have thought of. And um, then we were able to take what we needed and run with it. 
In order to make design accessible to underserved communities, sometimes you have to bring design to those communities or inspire design in those communities or facilitate it in an authentic way that's not kind of dropping it in the middle of it, but also kind of meeting those partners where they are, taking time out of the day, out of the building, um, to go and learn and try on the context for and with whom you are designing, I think that's the most important way to make it accessible for people who don't live in the weeds of it every day. Well, see, that's the thing. That's the difference between engagement and organizing, right? So if we engage people, if we just go in for a singular project and we ask a bunch of questions that are data points that will then allow us to do this one project, but we don't leave anything behind, we don't build the agency in the community, then we're doing a disservice to that community. Right? We're still extractive, right? And so if we organize a community, if we actually go in and provide and build agency within the community we're serving, not only do they grow, learn, live with the new thing that's coming into their environment, but they had such an input that it, it is a part of the family, right? It is, it is, there's ownership attached to it. But the theme about being approachable, I think is very real. Like I think the top floor of 365 Canal, like such a cool hip place can seem like, yikes, how do, how do you engage here? And y'all came and like went to the site and you know walked around and got dirty in the woods. I mean, that I think matters when it comes to like making yourself approachable and a partner. So yeah, work at New Harmony. Uh, I'm the community and internship coordinator. Um, this is our first year of operation. Uh, we're project-based learning schools, so kids work on projects um, that are guided by their interests. My name is Marlena Nip. I'm one of the associate garden educators at Phyllis Wheatley, uh, which is part of First Line Schools and Edible Schoolyard. I'm Charlotte Steele. I'm the other garden teacher at Phyllis Wheatley Community School. Um, the Edible Schoolyard teaches children in New Orleans to make healthy connections to themselves, the natural world, and their community at large through food and gardening. I'm Sophie Vorhoff. I'm the executive director of the Friends of Lafitte Greenway. We are the nonprofit that works to build, program, and promote Lafitte Greenway as a great public space. I'm Stefan Pasternak, CEO and school leader of Living School. We are a new high school opening in New Orleans East where students learn by doing. Uh, so we call ourselves an equity focused, democratic, project based school. You know, just with projects like this um, outside of the the walls of school is another opportunity for them to see, you know, design and planning that work. Yeah, so we are opening our doors for the first time to students in the fall. We have not existed yet. We just signed the lease on a space we're really excited to activate and bring to life. I think holds a lot of potential for the nature of the work we hope to do um, in New Orleans East, but it's an old laser tag facility in an old strip mall, um, and there's some work that needs to be done to it. And working with uh, EDR uh, through this MLK Day of Service has been um, such a windfall to us and that uh, we can't wait to see what they come up with. Um, this experience has been really incredible, just on a lot of different fronts. We have been visioning this project for several years now, and to be able to work with such a committed group of individuals who is really listening to our both concerns, aspirations, and be able to somehow find a common ground of all of that has been just really affirming and cool. Yeah, it's just been a lot of fun because it's just a world we don't live in, but it's also very, it's been very welcoming, so it's been fun. We were founded as a grassroots organization, so really we started as a lot of community volunteers coming together to shape a vision for this space. And from the beginning, we've really depended on volunteer professionals, designers, architects, planners that care about this, that see the value in the vision to lend their expertise and their time to make it possible.